Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide to Satisfactory here at the end of 2022 with Update 7 live here on the experimental build. So if you're playing on the regular version of the game, Update 6 is the latest you can get, but I wanted to just kind of try out some of these new Update 7 features myself. Uh, and also create a guide to help a brand new player start out in this amazing game. It can be a little overwhelming, but the idea here is I'm going to start a new game and you can watch along with me or play along with me and see lots of tips and tricks that I picked up after playing the game myself and getting all sorts of great advice from people on uh, the YouTube comments to my Let's Play of Satisfactory. By the way, my complete Let's Play uh, series is linked in the description below if you want to see me learn to play the game the first time um, and watch me kind of evolve my learning process but what I did was I distilled the knowledge that I got from other players and my own trial and error and I'm going to in a non-spoilery way present the game to you so that you can see if you want to buy it see if it's something that interests you or if you have purchased it kind of get over that initial hurdle understanding some of the game concepts some of uh the the strategies for success and things that you can do to make life easier on yourself as you set out in this game now this guide is by no means a um min maxing quickest route to the best possible technologies guide it's not a spoiler guide at all i'm going to just show you what you can do and give you some tricks so that when you open the game up you can explore it get the sense of wonder and discovery that comes uh, so well in this game to new players and let's dive in with a brand new game so when you're starting out you can choose where you like to begin what biome perhaps um you would like and in my let's play i did the grass fields it says it's ideal for first time pioneers and it is it looks amazing it's pretty fantastic so definitely check this out um if you're interested and i like this area and i recommend it but what I'm going to actually start in is the Rocky Desert. It says it's suitable for first-time pioneers, and I'm only doing this because I've never started here before. And I want to just um, try out a new biome so it at least looks different to me personally as I'm playing it. But I think either of these would be fine if you're a first-time player, and the concepts are going to be the same. Uh, it's just going to look different, and the resources might be spread out a little bit differently. These other two starting areas, the Northern Forest and the dune desert are kind of getting more difficult based on the description in terms of uh the elevation challenges the the perhaps the enemies the distance between resources what resources are readily available things like that so we're going to go with these left two and i'm going to go rocky desert but grass fields is also a fantastic place to start okay so i'm going to enter a session name you have to come up with some kind of um, session name, and I'm going to call this Incomp Attent Tutorial, like this. And um, I'm going to make a private session, okay, not multiplayer, just for me. And I'm going to select Rocky Desert, and I'm not going to skip the introduction because um, the onboarding process is like a built-in tutorial for the game, and I think it's extremely useful. So uh, we're going to start with it. As a new player, if you're booting up this game for the first time, you're going to get this onboarding. And so I want to play along with you so you can understand it from everything that you'll see as you boot up the game. All right. And we're in space. And we're in our little, you know, container here, and it looks okay. Attention, Pioneer. The following instructional video is a summary of your impending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Okay, great. Fix it. Pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. 
Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. Expand your factories, outposts, and pipelines through automation and augmentation. That's it. Get to work and be effective. Warning, planetfall imminent. Please remain seated during full procedure. What? Planetfall? Atmospheric entry in five. Uh-oh. Three, two, one. Planetfall procedure initialized. Those are flames. We're going through the atmosphere. I'm sure everything's fine. So what you'll notice with this game is that it has a hilarious sense of humor, that you are working for some, you know, megalith corporation, and they care about you 0% out of 100. Oh boy, there's a big creature out there. Please ensure the integrity of your multi-purpose exploration suit is at 100%. All right, we're going through. Remember, efficiency first. Godspeed. Efficiency first, exactly right. And there's my little scanner tool. All right. Okay. So Welcome once you get through that, two, a, B, B, oh, designated sector in the binary star system of Akicha. Okay, Akicha. I am Ada, also known as Artificial Directory and Assistant, tasked to support pioneers such as you in their mission. You are the third of your sector to survive planetfall. Congratulations. The third. Great. Objective-based introduction initialized. Welcome to onboarding. All right, so now they're going to onboard us. Objective. Please dismantle the drop pod. The resulting materials will be repurposed to construct a habitat and utility base from now on referred to as the hub. Note, fix it incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. All right, so let's talk about what we see on the screen. I am right now looking at our drop pod and you learn that we are the third to survive planet fall. Uh, you can see another planet over there in the distance and uh, you know, perhaps a moon or another planet over there. The sun is beating down on us on this awesome desert terrain. Now this game is a first person crafting, building, survival, automation game that doesn't do the great justice, but it's a pretty good genre introduction. We're going to be building systems of automation factories to gather resources for Fix-It. And we're going to increasingly build more sophisticated systems uh, that get complex and wild, and that is the fun of the game. But for now, I want to just look at the screen and explain to you what you see. So in the top center you can see the compass and it just displays which direction I'm uh, facing and there are icons that will appear on the compass like for example the drop pod icon uh, the diamond that drops down under the compass I'm looking at it so yep that's where it is uh, and you can use this to waypoint things and mark your location to get around much easier and in the lower left you'll see my health and in the bottom right you're going to see some uh, key bindings for items that you have equipped, hotkeys, things like that, uh, different uh, abilities that you can use. And in the upper right, you're going to have your uh, goal. And if there are hints that are on the screen, they will be in the left column in the middle. All right. Now, if you're playing regular, you won't see experimental build in your upper left, uh, but you also won't be on update 7 if you're playing in, you know, December of uh, 2022. So anyway, um, that's enough about the, the visuals, and it's asking me right now to dismantle the drop pod. So if you press F, okay, you pull out your scanner. You saw me grab this 
uh, when I got out of the drop pod. And that's this is just such a fun game. You know, you get this little, like, kind of barcode scanner, like I work at Amazon Warehouse or something like that. And I use this as my awesome tool. It's sort of like your gun, almost, in this game. And while Update 6 did in, invent um, and change the combat a bit in this game, one thing you want to get out of your mind philosophically right away as you play Satisfactory is that it's not a combat game. This is not a first-person shooter, even though the you know the perspective might look like it. I have a reticule in the middle, um, you know, of the screen, and uh, I've got something that's almost like a gun or a zapper. But while you can fight enemies, uh, you really aren't trying to do that. That's not the objective at all. You're trying to gather resources and build. All right, so you kind of have this like fake gun that's your tool, uh, and it's it's eh, an amusing way to handle that but also just important to note that combat is not the priority of this game now when i am in um dismantle mode you notice that my aiming reticule in the center of the screen changes to like a crane with a wrecking ball on it meaning like you're going to take something apart and the edges of the screen all have this orange um border and it's pulsing inward to indicate you are in dismantle mode and then when you mouse over something that you can dismantle like the drop pod you'll see that it turns orange with um, these lines through it meaning like this will be taken apart if you left click and below the dismantle icon in the center of the screen there's a crate meaning this is what you'll get if you take this apart so I'm gonna left click on this and you see a progress bar that ticks down as you're holding left click to dismantle something and it's gone all right so we now have the drop pod dismantled so if you look kind of to the left of my right hand with the gun on it it has other commands so i was just dismantling by holding the left mouse button but you can also close this by right mouse button pushing Q or pushing escape you can mass dismantle by holding left control and clicking everywhere and you can push H to hide these commands the heads up display all right I'm gonna right click and you'll see that I get out of dismantle mode okay all important fix it data and communication is recorded and stored in the codex including these steps okay so she's telling you that everything that you is explained in the onboarding process the tutorial is in the codex so if you get a message from someone an email or anything you can push o and open this screen which is the codex and you can look in here for um, recipes to craft things um, equipment that you can make recipes um, to either process or refine materials to make items okay or to make buildings so this is kind of what you have so far like so for example um, i know how to make iron ingots okay and it tells you that just starting out you have some recipes now you can sort this by um you can go to the tutorial section here on the tab um and you can go to your inbox but i was over on the far right option which is recipes right so all of your recipes that you know are here you unlock more recipes as you go. All of our tutorials are here, right? So I can find Dismantle the Drop Pod. I can even play it if I want to hear her say it, okay? So you can always come back here, and there are little orange badges that indicate which of the tutorials you've looked at again in the um, uh, notes screen here. And I'm going to just push Escape and get out of the codex, all right? Second objective. Please ensure you have your Fixit Incorporated Xeno Zapper equipped before leaving the drop zone. Okay. Note. According to Fixit regulations, every pioneer should have access to a means of defense against extraterrestrial threats. Oh boy. So, um, yes, we do want defense against extraterrestrial threats, but again, Fixit cares so much about you that the defense that they give you is a Xeno Zapper, which is kind of like a stun rod. Um, so we're going to push tab to open the inventory. Now, one thing I want to mention before I proceed about dismantling, um, 
I'll mention this again and again because as a new player, this was something that was vital for me that I missed, but uh, this game is extremely friendly to you. And what, that, what I mean by that is whenever you dismantle anything, you get the full resources back that you use to craft it. So there is no penalty, there is no attrition um, from crafting something and only getting like half of what you put into it back or something like that. They give you all of your resources back whenever you dismantle something, and this encourages you to um, move things around and try different builds uh, without penalty, and it's great. So just bear in mind that the game is very friendly to you, and you can always take something apart and just rebuild it someplace else if you want with dismantle. Now, I'm going to push tab to open the inventory, and you see I have a paper doll here. I have a head slot, a body slot, a back slot, a hand slot, and a leg slot. And you can unlock um, some more uh, as you progress in the game, and it's really cool. You get some equipment, and I have an equipment shortcut right now, which is my Xeno Zapper. And in my inventory, I have some hub parts, okay, that I got from dismantling the drop pod. And I have my Xeno Zapper, and that's all I have. And I'm going to just drag the Xeno Zapper over to my hand. All right. And you can see that now I'm holding the Xeno Zapper. All right. And um, you can also um, double click on the equipment instead. So you can use shift left mouse button to put this in your hand. Shift left mouse button from your hand to your inventory or just double click it or drag it over like I did. And once I'm done, I'm just going to push um, either tab or escape to close this screen. Okay. Third objective. Please familiarize yourself with the resource scanner to find iron. All right. Note, the acquisition of iron is considered essential in preparation for all future objectives. So, we need to get iron, and that is our first objective. And this is my Xeno Zapper. So if I left click with my Xeno Zapper, right, um, you'll notice that this is what it's doing. I'm reaching out and just trying to stun something, okay? So this is how bad we are. We have a melee weapon. There is no range at all on this, um, and it sort of does damage to things. You could kill things with this, sure, but you're going to probably get hurt in the process. It's not the best weapon, and again, they're emphasizing that combat is not really the objective of the game. Now, this is what the objective of the game is finding and collecting resources so we're going to find and collect iron ore we're going to push v okay to scan for iron nodes i push v and nothing happens why is that because you need to push and hold v to open up this window here this ring and then you're going to scan for iron ore that's the only thing you can scan for you can move the mouse around uh, to select something else if you can scan for it. But right now, all we can scan for is iron ore. So I'm going to let go. And then, boom, I use this scanner. Okay, and it scans all around me. And it locates iron ore. And you can see now on the compass at the top of the screen, there are iron ore nodes that are circular. And they give you underneath the iron ore node the distance to it. So... I'm going to just circle around, and I'm going to try to find the closest one. And it looks like this 316-meter iron ore over here is the closest one to me. Okay? So we're going to head in that direction. Now, I will say, you see this big dude over here? This guy? All right? I'm going to walk over to him. I'm just using WASD keys to walk over to this big guy. He's friendly. He's not mean. Okay? So this guy is nice. He won't fight you at all. So you don't have to worry about this dude. And he's standing in water. So we did pick the desert, but this desert has like a little stream. Now look at this. This guy um, can walk right through me, and he doesn't hurt me. He can also walk through anything that I've built, and he won't break it. He's just kind of like an awesome dude just doing his thing. So don't worry about that guy at all. Now, when I walked over here, look at this. Push E to pick up leaves. If I push E, I'm picking up leaves, okay? And... I am putting them in my inventory. If I push tab to open my inventory, up here in the upper left, you'll see I now have 15 leaves. And if you mouse over it, it'll say leaves are primarily used as fuel. Biomass burners and vehicles can use it for power. Indeed, early on, we're going to be using leaves to power everything that we do. So it's always nice to have them. Now, you can either just press E to pick up leaves or 
you can kind of just hold down the E key. And then if you look at anything, I'm just holding down E, I will just pick it up. So you don't have to press it every time. You can just walk around holding down E and just rip up the environment. You are a blight upon the planet and its resources. It's all here for you to just shamelessly exploit and harvest into oblivion. So just walk around picking up leaves. Now you can see in the lower left, it says 185 leaves picked up. And it tells you I have 206 total leaves in parentheses. So you can easily see how many you're getting and how many you have. I also got some flower petals in there too. So now I have, you know, a bunch of leaves. And I'm going to go into my inventory. And you can see I, I picked up nine flower petals, seven wood, and 278 leaves so far. Just by walking around and holding down the E key. Whenever you can interact with something, it will highlight white. And it will tell you what key you want to push to interact with it. But now we need to get our iron, okay? Now, I'm going to push V again, um, and I'm going to hold it just for a second. If you hold it long, it'll open up this, okay? And you can just let go and do that, or you can push it faster and just do the quick pulse. And I'm going to walk toward this, all right? And you can see that this particular node of iron is 225 meters away. Now, I can walk, or I can hold shift to run. Okay, and there is no reason not to run. There is no stamina, okay? So just run, run, run. Now, you see this little tree right here? I'm going to pick up all of these barrel nuts that are on this tree. This, you can look for these nuts from these trees, and if I push tab, you'll see these are consumables and can be eaten to restore half a health segment. So a health segment is just one of these um, squares that I have in the lower left, right? And this is how you heal yourself, okay? So you heal yourself by eating food um, and uh, using other consumables to heal. So you want to have some of these handy, right? So if you can find them, fantastic. If not, okay. Now, you'll notice that they're plentiful, by the way. You're going to find them. They're all over the place. Uh, my iron is up here on the top of this cliff. So I'm going to need to figure out a way to get up this cliff. Now, right now, I don't have a way to do that because I can't really build anything. So I'm going to need to run all the way around this sheer cliff face to get to some iron. And that is totally cool. What I recommend you do is just poke around. Look at the game. Look how beautiful it is. You know, this color scheme over here, you get kind of this No Man's Sky-ish color uh, of the, you know, 1960s and 70s sci-fi color contrast. And when you're doing this, you can start to explore what you can interact with naturally on the environment. And look, we found a little path right here to go up. All right, so let's go up this path. Your starting area is going to be different, by the way. Um, it's random. The way that it works is the world is fixed. So the planet, the surface of it, is always the same for everybody. Um, but you start in a random location is how I believe it works. All right? So uh, the resources themselves might also be randomized of their locations, but the, the geological features, the, the oceans and stuff like that, the major mountains and landmarks, those are set. All right, so now I'm going to push V again, be like, where's my iron? And, oh, it's close. Now you can see how, yep, right up here. This one is now only 82 meters away. I'm going to keep walking toward it. All right, and I'm going to run. What's this over here? Wow, cool. It's like coral. I'm in the what appears to be uh, the bottom of an ancient ocean or something. Now, this is right here. You see this almost like floral design with petals and a uh, nexus coming out of the middle. This is an iron ore deposit, all right? So this big chunk of rock that's extending from the earth is an iron ore deposit and it says at the end that it's pure there's levels of purity which determine the efficiency at which you can get iron from the node now if i look at the ground i can also get ore 
from this, okay? So there's iron on the ground, and it's easily identified by this kind of cluster that's sticking up in the middle, all right? So I'm going to hold E, and you see I pull out a little chisel, and I'm gathering iron ore. You don't... Um, objective. Build the hub. All right, and then eventually no. that will break. To complete this objective, the resources salvaged from the drop pod will be consumed. Okay. Caution. Ensure the hub is built on spacious open terrain close to the presence of iron sources. Failure to do so will likely result in non-optimal progress. Okay. So we want optimal progress, right? Um, and, you know, she gives you these, like, oblique uh, corporate speak euphemisms. Um, Non-optimal means we'll die. Um, or we'll just lose. Uh, I guess we won't die necessarily, but it's bad for fix it. And what's bad for fix it is usually bad for us because uh, we need them, uh, unfortunately. So they're asking us to build the, the hub. And you, we have the crate with the necessary components to build the hub in our inventory. And it says um, we need to build it. But first, um, look at this. Time is passing. You see the sun is setting. I'm going to pick up these nuts over here that I saw because I want to have all of those. You can get more iron if you want. And notice this iron on the ground will not deplete. Okay? So when I'm using my chisel, I can just stand here all day and get iron. But this is a very inefficient way to gather iron. Now look at this thing over here. Oh my god. Hostile. All right? So this pod has opened and little death bees have come out and we don't want them. So I'm going to just try to smack them and we need to get rid of this. All right? So I'm going to break that thing. And those guys, um, those bugs, uh, what they did was they just kind of like kamikaze into me and they died doing that, defending their hive. But I want to eat to get my health back, all right? Now, first of all, you can push H to just holster your weapon if you don't want to see yourself carrying that around, um, and then push H to bring it out again, all right? Um, but what I want to do is actually push Tab to open up my inventory, and you'll see that my nuts are up here as an equipment shortcut. I'm just going to double-click it, and then now I, you can see I'm holding my nut in my hand. And um, I, I lost some health, okay? I slowly got a little bit of health back and I'm going to just eat this right and I'm going to eat this again and every time I'm getting half of my health back and now I'm at full health so now I got back to full health and those bad guys are away from me now if you started in the uh, grassy biome you might not have um, anything that hostile close to your iron uh, but you might you very well might there's uh, some other little dudes that like to run around on the ground that you might encounter, but that was not really threatening to us at all. I didn't have to do much. I just had to whack it. And I was able to eat berries to get my health back. Now, I'm going to just push H to holster that, okay? And they want us to build. So we push Q to open up the build menu, right? And uh, right now, what they want us to build is the hub. Now, I can mouse over this, okay? And it will tell you what it is. It says the heart of your factory. This is where you complete fix-it milestones to unlock additional blueprints of buildings, vehicle parts, equipment, etc. So this is like your home base. So you're going to build this. And this is where you communicate with fix-it. This is where you um, are awarded new blueprints, new technology, um, and all sorts of great stuff. So this is what we're going to build. And in the lower right of this screen, you'll see that it has a cost. It'll tell you what ingredients you need, what components, materials, resources you need to craft it. We need just the crate that we got from breaking down our drop pod. Now, if you click this little plus button um, in the upper right corner, you can pin it as a to-do list, okay? Like if I pin this over here, all right, you can see on the right of my screen, it will just pin this. And what this means is basically um, I can see what ingredients or resources I need to build something so I can have this shopping list or recipe list like on my screen while I build it. And it's pretty cool. Um, but right now I'm, I don't need it because I've got all the stuff. I'm just going to click on the hub. And when I do this, now I'm taken to this screen where I bring out my cool gun again and 
Instead of dismantling, I'm constructing. So the build mode, the reticule in the center of the screen, you see it has a hammer, and the borders of the screen are not pulsing like they are in dismantle mode. And what will happen is whatever blueprint, uh, blueprint for a structure you're trying to build will appear in front of you, uh, and you can use the mouse to kind of move where you want to set this. Now, if it is in red, that means something is preventing it from being built here. In this case, it'll tell you a player is in the way, okay? Um, I can't place it here. It'll say invalid placement, all right? There's like, there's some uh, mountains and stuff in the way. Um, but I'm going to actually push uh, escape and close this because I want to read the instructions. It says the hub can be built but they want us to build it near iron nodes. Well, look at this. There's two iron nodes right here. So this is a great place for us to start. We've got iron nodes, which we need um, very much in the beginning of the game, right by our hub, and we can build it. You can always move your hub whenever you want, so don't worry about like being committed forever. Just try to find one or more iron nodes to be close to. Push Q, select the hub, and then you can move it here. Now, while you're aiming it, right, if it's blue, that means you can build it. And what I'm going to do is just rotate it. I'm using the mouse wheel to do that. And I can rotate this however I wish, okay? I will tell you that uh, looking at it right here, in the right portion is kind of my, my workbench area. And in the left portion is like my little uh, bedroom area. Um, it doesn't really matter how you do this, but I'm going to put it right there and I'm gonna left click when I'm done and it just conveniently um, gets built now um, I'm going to push Q to close the build menu okay and here we go Congratulations. you have unlocked hub feature manual craft bench yay hub feature hub terminal yay all right objective complete hub upgrade one note the craft bench and hub terminal are essential for progression to the next objective. Absolutely. Okay, so Ada is, quote-unquote, helping us. And you see these giant exclamation points. These are telling us, like, this is where we need to go for the quest. So here's the hub terminal, and here's the craft bench. And we're going to be using these all the time. So if I go to the hub terminal, I'm going to push E to interact with it. And this is where you start trying to upgrade um the the hub to get you new technologies so i'm going to select a milestone um hub upgrade one all right so i'm at tier zero which is the onboarding process and if i select this it's going to help us get these if we get this upgrade we get these rewards we get more inventory slots okay we get plus three bag slots which is amazing so when I push tab to open up my inventory, you see there's a limited amount of slots that I have, but this will give me three more when walking around, okay? And I can build a portable miner, which is phenomenal early game. You're going to love this thing. And an equipment workshop to make more equipment for ourselves, okay? All we need is to get 10 iron rods, okay? So this is the milestone cost. All right, and I'm just going to say select milestone, all right? And it wants 10 iron rods, and it's showing our inventory in the upper right here. And if we had it, we could double-click it, shift, left-click it, or just drag it over and then push this button to launch it over to fix it, but we don't have it. So we're just going to push escape and go over here. And I'm going to configure the craft bench, and now I'm going to interact with the craft bench, and this is what the craft bench is telling me. Here's what I can make. On the left are the recipes that I can create. On the build, on the center is like the build screen. And on the right is my inventory. You can search for recipes by just typing them in here. So I know I need to make rods, for example. So if I type in rod, it'll just, you know, limit it to only iron rod. But I'm going to close this for the time being. Because I need to chain up to iron rods. If I select iron rod, which I know I need for the milestone, it's going to tell me, hey, you can't build this without iron ingots. And I, how do I get iron ingots? I can craft them right here. Now, if I select this, in the center, it will show me it's going to take my iron ore and turn it into an iron ingot, all right? Now, I can make 44 iron ingots, okay? Because I have 44 iron ore so this is a one-to-one -one, um process all right and 
I'm going to stand right here and push the space bar, okay, to make this happen. Now, you just need to push the space bar key once, all right, and I am crafting these away. All right, so I'm just going to just hold, stand right here while my character just manually makes all of these things. Now, this is a game about automation. So right now, I'm manually doing this, and you'll always be able to do this with your craft benches, like manually make stuff, but we're going to be making machines to make this for us, okay? And you're going to see how that works. But basically, right now, iron ore is useless by itself for me. I'm just going to turn all of this into iron ingots. And as I do that, okay, you can see that the number 44 in square brackets uh, to the right of iron ingot has disappeared because I now no longer can make any more because I'm out of ore. But I can make iron plates and iron rods because you can see that I have the ingredients. So if I select iron rod, for example, it's telling you um, it takes one ingot to make one iron rod, okay? And um, it takes one unit of labor to do that. Uh, so watch this. If I push spacebar to craft, uh, by the way, you used to have to hold the space bar to craft. Now you just need to depress it once, and you don't have to do anything else. So I'm just going to push it, and I'm making these. And I'm making them, look, I'm making them much faster than I made the other uh, items because some labor is takes more work than others, right? So uh, it takes three times as much labor or work to create an iron ingot from iron ore, right? So you see how it's like hammer times three right here, okay? And this is also hammer times three, um, but this is hammer times one. So this is indicating to you that some items will build faster than others. Some will take more labor, some will be more time consuming, more involved. And this is all about the game automating things by planning based on how long they'll take, how many resources they'll take, making a more efficient, smooth, streamlined operation. And now we've got a bunch of iron rods. Now, I didn't need to turn all of those into iron rods. I could have made some iron plates, but to be honest, you're going to need all of it. So it's not a huge deal. If you messed up and made plates instead, for example, you could just run over here, okay, and just hold E, get yourself some more iron ore, and you'd be good. But I'm not going to do that anymore because check this out. Now the game is about to start getting really, really fun, all right? I'm going to walk over to the, the terminal, and I'm going to push E, and this is the milestone that the terminal wants. It wants 10 rods, so um, the game will automatically draw from your inventory the items that this is asking for and put it in this top box that's larger where it says relevant items and so it's already showing me i've got the iron rods i can just double click these and it will automatically just select 10 of them for me and when i'm ready i'm going to say upgrade the hub okay and we did it and then now look at this we've built like an external frame our hub just got bigger congratulations you have unlocked Building, workshop, Thank you. equipment, portable miner, inventory, additional slots, hub feature, personal storage. Sixth objective, complete hub upgrade to, note, portable miners require no power and will mine a node until their inventory is full. Note, multiple portable miners can be used on a single node. Okay, fantastic. So she's telling us awesome, awesome stuff, all right? We are getting... Uh, first of all, before I talk about that, look at this exclamation point. I'm just going to push E and open this up, and this is a storage. This is our inventory over here on the right. You can see one, two, three slots right down here that we just got three more slots on the bottom. Our inventory got bigger, all right? It can get bigger and bigger and bigger as we play, and we're going to need it. Now, if I don't want to carry anything around, I can just put it in here. So, for example, this hatcher remain... I'm not going to need to carry this. I'm going to need this for MAM research, which is a building that we're going to get later in the game. I don't need it right now. I'm just going to double click on this to put it in my storage. So this is like a little box that you have that you can put things in. Um, and it's great. It's free right now. Um, and we can just put whatever we want in here. I'm going to put my leaves in here just for fun too. Uh, and I'm going to put these flower petals in here. Okay. And I'm going to sort my inventory by just clicking the sort button. Okay. And then... Good. I can take everything if I want just by clicking take all, or I can store everything if I want, and that's fine. And I'm going to push escape to close this. Now, they're saying that we can 
make an equipment workshop and from the equipment workshop we can build a portable miner okay so again you can take iron ore and then process that into an ingot which you can then turn into an iron bar or a plate okay um and then now we can build another building which lets us build something else and on and on and on and this is the hilarity and complexity of the game look at this little don't trip sign oh that's nice of fix it to put that there while we're constructing our hub now if i open up the uh the build menu i'm going to push q i'm going to see that i can build the hub but i don't really need that anymore but i'm going to go down to production all right so there's special and which is just for progression in the game and right now i've built the hub i can't build another one um, I'm going to go to production, and it says with a new label over it, equipment workshop, okay? Now, I'm just going to click this over here and close this, and it tells me that I need six iron plates and four iron rods. So, you can see that because of my to-do list, I just need iron plates, right? So, I'm going to need to get some more iron. I'm going to run over here, and I'm actually just going to break this big section off. Get it out of my way. Got it. Okay. Now, I'm going to run over here to my hub, and let's just push tab. How much do I have? I have 29 iron ore. That's actually pretty reasonable. Let's go here to the crafting bench, all right? And I'm going to select ingots, and we need to make a bunch more. I'm just going to push the space bar key, and you can see that I'm making them. Now, look at my work or um, labor bar. You can see how it takes three hits to make this, it fills up in sections of three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and it's making this, right? Now, I can only make 18 iron plates, though, and that is because it takes three ingots to create two plates. So, um, there is a bit of math that's involved in this game. I'm just going to push space while I talk about this, but don't worry about it at all. Like, you can get really, really ultra-efficient and plan everything exactly, um, you know, and it's very satisfying to do that. Or you can be like me and just be totally lazy, and it still will work. It just won't be as fast or efficient as a master engineer um, with perfect arithmetic skills. Now, I can't make any more because I only have two ingots remaining, and that is fine with me. Um, now, I have... 18 iron plates okay and i have my iron rods so i'm going to um, make myself an equipment workshop okay and i can do it now i don't know why my um to-do list didn't dynamically update right there i am on experimental mode so maybe uh you know it's just a bug that they're working out and the game isn't finished yet by the way uh but it was weird that I had so many... I have 18 iron plates, and it didn't update that until I clicked it again. Um, but anyway, here we go. So, I'm in build mode, and I want to build a, this workshop. Now, you're going to need to go in here. So, I recommend putting it close to your hub, and I will. I'm going to put it just like this. Kind of close by my hub. There. I'm going to push uh, escape to close the build menu. And look at this. This is my awesome workshop okay i'm gonna walk inside i'm gonna check it out i got like a recycling bin i have a generator i have some fun tools over here i have some interesting storage and you can interact with any of this to do stuff you don't actually have to go like right here and use the vice or anything like that or the blowtorch you can just go anywhere and as long as it says push e to configure equipment workshop you can open this and you can see what we can make Right now, we only have two recipes. We can make a portable miners and we can make a Xeno Zapper. Um, but we already have a Xeno Zapper. There's no reason to have more than one. But we want to make portable miners. And I'm going to make all six of these, okay? I'm going to just push spacebar. And this takes 10 labor to make. It takes, you can see the recipe right here. It takes two plates and four rods to make one miner, okay? The miners do not stack in our inventory. You can see how they're filling up right here. And we made as many as we could. I'm going to push escape, okay? And it says, all right, um, make a portable miner, okay? And we're going to start deploying these things, all right? So, 
I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to double click the portable miner to put it in my hand. Okay. And I'm holding it and I'm just going to put it right on top of this iron node. Okay. So you remember all these like flower petals that I noticed coming out? These are all iron. So anywhere you want to put it on here, I'm just going to click left click. I'm going to drop that down and look at this. It's like a, a crab or a spider and it's rotating and it's getting its bearings and it's setting up and it is doing its thing. It's drilling. And I'm going to do that again. There is no reason not to um, put a bunch of these down because you want as much iron as you can get. So I'm just going to... Uh, I made six of them. I'm going to put three here and I'm going to put three over here. Alright, so I'm just going to set up a, a ton of these guys. Because in this game, you'll realize there is never an amount of resources that you can have too much of. You want as many as you can get, okay? Alright, and now um, we are making progress. I'm going to click E, or push E rather, to open this up. Now you can see... This is the Portobello Miner, and it's making 80 iron ore per minute, okay? And you can see right here, this is how many it has, this is how it's producing it, right? This thing is like self-powered, it's going, all right? You can click this to pick up the miner and move it to a new spot. You can push this to just take all of the iron ore that it's got, and it's gathered right here. You can see this is how many it has, 10, 11, all right? So it's filling up with iron ore. Remember, you cannot deplete this um, node. So it's fine to have this going, going, going. But why did this one stop? This one stopped because they can only hold 100. Okay? So the reason you don't make indefinite amounts of these is because they will stop once they're full. Right? You can see in my inventory, I can only stack iron to 100. So I'm just going to walk around gathering all of this iron. Something that's important to tell you about your inventory at this point is that there is no weight, okay? So you can walk around in this game carrying tons and tons of something and it's no problem because you have like interdimensional storage in your pockets. Um, but the, the constraint is not weight, it's just slots and how much things can stack up to, right? So um, I'm doing fantastic. I've got a bunch, and I'm going to look over here. We need to get to Hub Upgrade 2. So I'm going to click Hub Upgrade 2, and we get all of these rewards, but we're going to need 6 iron bars and 10 plates. So I'm going to select the milestone, and we don't have enough yet, right? We only have some rods, okay? So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to make a billion iron ingots, okay? I'm not actually going to make a billion because this will take too long, all right? I'm going to make enough to get the milestone, but we're not going to make any more ingots because this is where the automation comes in. Do I want to stand here forever and make iron ingots? No, of course not. No one does. When I get the new technology, I will be able to automate the process of making ingots. This game is about kind of building up and increasing your versatility and options for automation, all right? I'm going to go to iron plates now. So what you're making manually, eventually you'll be able to make automatically, which will let you make more complicated stuff, um, and on and on and on until Fix-It is just over the moon. I'm going to make rods now. Okay, now let's drop everything off and see how close we are. We are good on plates, but we need nine more rods. So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to make enough ingots to make rods, right? So we're just going to fill this up until it says nine iron rods. Space bar, iron rods, craft them. By the way, if you uh, click this with the mouse button, um, you have to hold it, I believe. Space bar is your friend on that one. And I'm going to double click this, and we're just going to upgrade that hub. And uh, let's see what happened. Ooh, look, our hub did get upgraded. It looks much nicer. Congratulations. Okay. 
You have unlocked hub feature, biomass burner, Yay. scanner feature, copper, new buildings and recipes, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench, respectively. Okay. So which... Seventh objective. Oh. Complete hub upgrade three. Yep. Note. Connect buildings to a biomass burner for power. Note. Buildings such as the smelter require a recipe to be set. Indeed. Advice. Automate the smelting process and use portable miners for optimal results. Absolutely. Okay. So first things first. Before I do anything, I'm going to walk around to all of my miners and um, take all of the ore that they have so that they can get more for me. All right. This will just give us a big stockpile of ore. And now they're going. Okay. So what she's saying is a couple of things. First of all, we need to go to the terminal and we want to do upgrade three. All right. And we're going to select this milestone and we need copper wire. We need rods and we need plates. So we can't make copper wire yet. We're going to go in here. Um, oops. The exclamation point's actually over here at the biomass burner. So here's our biomass burner. Now, this is the biomass burner where we can make uh, power right now. And this is when, you know, the game starts to get a little bit more complicated. But this is basically going to provide power for our workstations that need power. All right. And you, it says insert fuel. Remember, we found leaves. You can insert wood or you can insert leaves to get power. If I double click this, okay, it's going to burn... Um, 12 wood per minute okay to give power right so you could see that's not very good um it's going to take a lot to power things up but right now um nothing is connected so we're not using power so we're okay uh, but if i go over here into my uh, workshop i'm gonna push e and did we get any new recipes not just yet where are the recipes she's talking about q Q says I can build a smelter. So, this is a smelter. A smelter is what's going to take iron ore and turn it into ingots for us automatically. Or any kind of raw ore, and for that matter, and turn it into an ingot. Um, well, not any kind, but early, early ores we can turn into ingots with this. But we need iron rods and we need wire. So, wait a minute. I can't make that. I can't do that. What's going on? What's going on is that at the craft bench, this is where I got new recipes. I can make wire and cable, but I have to have copper ingots. So I need copper. So how do I do that? Well, we're going to go back and look at the complete hub upgrade three hints. Hold V to switch to the resource scan, right? Now you'll see I can scan for iron and I can scan for copper. So I just push the mouse, spin it to select copper. I'm going to let go and scan okay and scan 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 and where is a copper node there is one over there there and there this one is the by far the closest so we're going to go there now here's what we're going to do i'm going to take some of these portable miners with me so i can get copper okay so i'm going to um store everything in my inventory and just take out what i need and all i really want right now um, is my Xeno Zapper and my berries. Okay, everything else can just stay here to free up my bag space. Now I'm going to run, run over here um, and I'm going to open the miner and I'm going to just pick up the miner. Okay, and when I pick it up, I get all of the ore that was inside it and the miner. I'm going to pick up the miner. Okay, and I'm going to pick up the miner. I'm going to take three of these over to the copper. Okay. So the copper, I'm going to push V just to quickly scan for it again and remind myself where it is. I'm holding shift to run and I'm just setting my point of focus that my north is now the copper node and I'm running to it. Now, if you want, push tab, double click on your Xeno Zapper just in case you want to have this ready to go for any kind of threats. Now look at this. What did I just find? Oh my, I found even more iron. So this is great. Uh, now this guy right here is a nasty enemy that we don't want to mess with. Um, he's actually going to shoot at us, okay? And we don't want to deal with that at the moment. But 
those are two iron nodes um, that's fantastic, so it's right by our base. So we've got even more iron, but I'm going to leave that guy. Right now, running away from enemies is just going to be your friend. And what is this? This is, well, here's some copper right here. Now, I'm going to mine this, okay? And get all the copper, but you'll notice how um, that didn't show up when I was scanning. Because this is not a permanent copper node. You see there's none of the flower um, petals on the ground. This is gone once I've mined it. So I got a little bit of copper, which is cool, but I need more than that, right? So I'm going to run over here, and we're getting closer, closer, closer. I'm taking all of these nuts, by the way. I want to be able to heal myself. And I might as well start collecting as many leaves as I can while I'm walking. Um... Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. And here it is. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get this. Something is angry. I hear something nasty. What is it? That guy. Okay. So this guy is upset, and he's going to shoot stuff at us. Okay? So it's our job to kind of um, understand that. <laughs> And see if we can fight him. So I'm just going to walk up to him and just bash him with this and see if it hurts him at all. And we eventually killed this guy. So he's a plasma spitter. We got his remains. And um, he's dead. So he hurt us. So we can remember just click on our berries and eat these. Fill our health back up. A little bit. A little bit. Good. And then I'm going to go back to this. Okay. You can see our health is regenerating very slowly, so we don't have to eat all the way, but I like to top myself off. I'm going to mine this. The guy doesn't do a lot of damage. He's not horribly hard, um, but just be on your toes. And here's copper. You see it has that bluish tint, but notice that this is impure. So this is not a very good copper um, node. It's going to give us copper at a reduced rate, unfortunately, but c'est la vie. I'm going to select my... Auto miner, throw it down. I'm going to select this one and throw it down. And I'm going to select this one and throw it down. Let these guys just start working. While they're working, I'm going to work. So this is like four times that working. So we're going to get a bunch of copper right now and save it up. So I'm mining, I'm getting copper. Good. That's a pretty good amount of copper, and I'm going to um, just walk around and get a bunch of leaves because I know that I'm going to need biomass for my smelter, so I'm just making sure that I have a ton of fuel to burn right now while my miners are picking up a good amount of copper for us. Remember, I don't need to make... You can see in the upper right, I need 20 spools of copper wire that's not like a ridiculous amount so i'll go ahead and just get this i'm going to try to let these things fill up if possible okay and you can see that it's getting 20 per minute okay so remember you always want to open this and look at the rate like, how much am I getting, right? I'm going to grab all this copper. And I'm going to grab all this. And I'm going to grab all this. Now, it's going to take too long, then, for me to just stand here. So I'm going to run back to my base, okay? And you can see that your hub is marked on your compass. So I'm just going to aim at it, and I'm going to run to it. And um, this is not really marked, except for the fact that it's the closest copper node to my base. So I could come back and get those by just scanning by pushing V for the nearest copper node and return to it. Now, here's my buddy iron that we found, okay? I can fall down here and go get it. Uh, I will take damage. Let's uh, experiment. How much damage am I going to take? Ouch. Not tremendous. You see that? I only took one health hit point. That's not horrible. And I'm going to kill this guy. He's going to hurt me a little bit. Um, but oops, I don't have my weapon selected. Let me get that on there. The reason is... And come over here. 
I just don't want this guy guarding the iron or bothering me ever in the future. So I'm just going to keep hitting him until he dies. I'm going to pick up his remains. And I'm just going to move on with my life. Back to the hub. While I'm doing that, I'm going to click on my food. And oop, I'm going to eat it. There we go. Uh-huh. And I'm going to just then push tab and get my zapper back on. Fantastic. And here's my hub over here. You jump. Space bar, of course. Here we go. And fantastic. Now, I got all this copper. What do I need to do with it? Well, you guessed it. I need to come here and make copper ingots. So we're going to just push the space bar and craft these up. Same amount of labor, three to make these and you could see actually wire is super easy to make i'm going to push space look um wire gets you two wire for one ingot so this is actually faster so we're going to just make a bunch of wire okay and we can already upgrade to hub upgrade three if we wanted or i could come down here and try to build myself a smelter right? And I need iron rods to do that. I'm missing iron rods. So let's go into my storage here. And no, I don't have any iron rods left. So I'm going to have to go here and we're just going to make some ingots. All right. And I'm going to make rods. All right. Now I'm going to make a smelter. Okay. And I'm going to make a smelter now when you look at my smelter you'll notice some things first of all it has a lightning bolt icon which means it needs power then you'll see that there is a uh, orange door and a teal door with arrows this means input and output so the ore goes in the orange and then comes out the teal as processed so I'm going to put this really really close okay like this and I'm going to just close the build menu like this. So here's my smelter, right? And I want this thing to make bars. So I'm going to push E on this. And we're going to say, I want you to make iron ingots. All right? And it says, okay, with iron ore, I can make 30 ingots per minute. All right? And it's going to take 4 milliwatts or 4 megawatts, I suppose, of power. Um, and this is telling you... Um, the efficiency that it's running at, okay? And we're just going to not pay too much attention to this at the moment because it's early on. Let's just go ahead and um, scale back and say, okay, we just need to give it iron ore. But look, I have so much iron ore. So I can feed it in here. Now, it can only hold 100. I can try to... I can't put any more. Just like us, it can only fill up to 100, okay? But now it's ready to go. It just needs power. Well, how does it get power? I have to build power lines, okay? So I push Q... And I go to power, and I can build a power line, all right? But I need cable to build a power line. So let's go over to the craft bench, and let's make some cable. Now I've got eight cable. You'll notice that at the bottom of the screen, something has been automatically hotkeyed for me. And if I push two, I'm now building power lines. They have put that on there for me, all right? So now what I need to do is hook up a connection. So it's telling me I'm, I'm in build mode, and there's an electric bolt saying I'm building a power line. You can see the cable right there. It's going to take one piece of cable for this connection. And all I have to do is click on the lightning bolt right here, the power of the smelter, okay? And you can see now it's building a line that connects to this, all right? And I want to just move this over, over, over until I connect it to the power icon here at my biomass burner. And it will take one cable. You can see it's red. It wants to build a pole right now. Um, and I can't build this because I don't have concrete. So this isn't going to work. It's red, 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 red until I snap it right here and I left click. And then now you can see that I am smelting. All right, now I'm going to push escape to close this. 
this green bar means that power is coming out of the biomass burner. You can see it's churning up these leaves and making power, okay? Um, but you can see it's going through the fuel pretty quickly, right? Now I'm going to run over to this, and you can see it is processing. It is using the power to make these iron ingots. It's taking iron ore from this. You can see this number is getting smaller, and on the right, you can see the ingot number is getting bigger. These are how many I have. I could just double-click these to take these away from this, okay? And now I have iron ingots. So this is automatically turning ore that I've gathered into ingots, but it takes power to do that, okay? And this will last for as long as I have wood in the biomass burner. And it will keep going for as long as this workstation is demanding power. So as long as there's iron ore in here, this guy's, um, this smelter is always going to be asking for power. And this will provide it. As soon as the job is done over here, this thing will turn off and not waste electricity for you, okay? But if there's no power, then the smelter will turn off and not produce anything for you. So while this is happening, I'm going to go around to all of my portable miners and just... Um, get them going again by collecting the ore from them. All right. Now, um, I'm going to click on the smelter, and I'm just going to double-click some ore to top this back off to 100. All right. And I'm going to double-click on this and get myself a bunch of ingots. So now, we have automated the process, okay, of making ingots with a smelter. You can see, again, here's a green bar. This means this station is getting power. All right. It's taking... Let me go over here to my biomass burner, all right? And I'm showing you that it's... Um, right now, we're producing 20 MW megawatts of power, and the smelter is taking four, which means right now I could have five smelters, and they would draw all the power that we're producing, all right? So I have plenty of power right now. I'm doing fine. But this is about to run out. So I'm going to just wait for a moment until this runs out of wood to show you what happens, okay? Doot, doot, doot. It's going. And it's burning its last piece of wood. You can see it's burning the fuel right here. So what's going to happen? Well, what happens is once it runs out of power, it's going to turn red. And it's going to say I'm out of power. But... I'm going to double-click my leaves, and I'm going to go over here, and you'll see red. No power it's making, okay? You can see it visibly stops churning leaves right here. It's turned off, and if I run over to my smelter, you can see that the power indicator is red. It's lost power, and I can double-click this to get my iron. You can also just take out iron ore at any time and change your recipe. You can click on the recipe tab and change over to copper or whatever recipe you have, and you can click on the production tab to see the specifics of what's being made. Now, I want this to keep going, so I'm going to run over to my biomass burner, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to now just give it leaves. Now, you can see leaves stack way larger, but look, it takes 80 leaves per minute in, instead of um, the 12 per minute of the wood, all right? So the wood burns much slower and is, is better in that respect, but leaves are really easy to get. So at the beginning of the game, biomass is kind of a hassle. Um, you need a lot of it, but all you have to do is just walk around and just gather leaves, and you're pretty much good to go uh, for your power needs. So what we have just done is completely automate one aspect of our production, right? So if I look at what we can build in the queue build menu, we've built the smelter. And now we could actually build more smelters if we wanted. I'm thinking about going over and putting a smelter by my copper node so that I can have copper being produced. But we want to get some new technology before we do anything like that. And we'll get into that next time. Everyone, I think this is a very good start to a very basic beginner's guide to satisfactory and i'd love to know what you think of it so far if it's being helpful to you if you have any questions i plan on doing more of this if you're if uh interest is expressed where i will show you more of the game and more processes of automation more technologies give you more tips um but for now we've talked about how to fight how to heal how to gather 
how to automate, um, how to use the map, how to navigate, how to build, how to deconstruct, and we're just working through the onboarding process to learn what this game is about, hopefully learn if it's a game that you're interested in, and see some of the new features with Update 7. Everyone, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care.